All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get the tea in right before you started. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Jesus Christ. All right, all right. Okay. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> what the... This could be our opening. This would be an amazing opening. I think we right. would love it. Oh my god! <laughs> what do you mean? All right, all right. Oh my god! <laughs> all right, so, all right, so you don't have it together, do you? You can't into <laughs> this just <laughs> completely. What? what did you say? You don't. You so don't have it together right now when you not, you, not at all. You're not in the, be straight with it and then you just like lost. not in the slightest. <laughs> you were like <laughs> trying to be like oh, okay. Alright. Alright, so today we're <laughs> <sighs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey would have uh, done it one take right here. Well, good thing we're not Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, hit it. Let's go. All right, so today we're talking about authenticity or being authentic and that's being to me authentic is a is one of the big ones it's a big word because that to me is half of our podcast because to me and that's the tagline in our podcast as well is how to live a conscious and authentic life so authentic is half of the subject in my opinion so this is one of the big ones and I realized we hadn't talked directly about it. We'd had some, it was a segue on another episode, but we hadn't talked directly about authenticity. And I think there are, <clears throat> there are a lot of layers to authenticity and there are some people are starting to realize that they want to be authentic. Uh, but there are so many reasons. There's so many levels um, to why it's important to be authentic. <clears throat> and um so i thought that would be the that could be the subject for today and it, it would have its own episode it, it deserves its own episode right yeah because yeah. uh it's a it's a beautiful thing and like you said it has it has a lot of layers and a lot of kind of um yeah it 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 can mean different thing, different things for different people, and maybe actually a, a starting point could be like when we talk about authenticity. What do we what do we mean, Tobin? What is kind of like our definition of that, of living yeah. an authentic life or being our authentic selves? And um, maybe it'd be kind of nice to jump into to that as a as a starting point for. For this conversation yeah to me i <clears throat> i associate authenticity with two things or i i talk about often authenticity two ways the first one is i i call it living from the inside and out that's a sort of more uh, metaphorical way to talk about it and in terms of definition to me authenticity is when emotions Thoughts and actions are in alignment. <clears throat> and that's why I call it living from the inside now, because from the inside, which is your emotions and your thoughts, to the outside, which is your actions. When all that is in alignment, when, when your actions aren't in conflict with your thoughts and emotions, then you're being authentic. Then your entire system is aligned up and everything is working without any friction. You're just completely um, being natural to your whole being. That's sort of how I think about being authentic. <clears throat> Can I ask you something about that? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I want to know what you think as well, but you can ask me first. Yeah, okay. So you said this with when your emotions, your thoughts are aligned with your actions, when everything is kind of like in that harmony or balance. Yeah. Um, can I like, can I ask this into, okay, so does that mean that you're living, you're, you're, you know, every time you have an emotion or a thought, that you're kind of taking action from that place or what do you, what do you mean by that kind of? Yeah, I, I can sort of see what you're getting at because one of the reasons why a lot of people are afraid of being authentic is because they're afraid of being impulsive. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, so authentic means I just do whatever comes up. I'm just like, I'll go into a rage or whatever. But one important thing about authenticity, and that's why it's, only half of our podcast is you have to be conscious when you're authentic. Mm. So that means be aware of what is going on inside you. And actually you need to be that anyway, to be authentic, you need to know what is actually going on. And, <clears throat> and when you are conscious of what's going on inside you, you can express your true feelings and thoughts and actions in a way that is not impulsive. And what that means is that, you are not reacting. Hmm. You are first you become conscious and then you respond. So there is a, it, it, it comes from consciousness. It does not come from impulsiveness, but so for example, when, a and this, it may sound confusing, but when an, when an impulsive person becomes angry and when an authentic person becomes angry, because both can become angry, it may look similar but it doesn't feel similar. It doesn't feel similar for the person and it doesn't feel similar for other people. There's a very different quality to it, but everyone needs the ability to be angry and every person's life has situations where it's necessary to be angry. So anger is not bad, but impulsive anger is bad because it lacks the, the quality of consciousness or awareness. So it's like blind anger. And what is the conscious um person doing differently to the impulsive person in that when for example with anger so you have anger as an emotion that comes up in your life with a friend family member yourself a situation how does the conscious person act differently well <clears throat> a conscious person uses anger when it's appropriate to be angry so for example, um, when you become conscious and you have reactive anger, that's, that anger is actually not authentic. It's not, it's not true anger because the anger arises from your ego. So there is an idea in your head that you've been slighted and that makes you angry, but that's not true anger. So if you become conscious in that kind of anger, you don't, ex you don't express it. But for, let's say, for example, that someone has stepped over your boundaries too many times and it's a real thing and it's a problem and you become angry because you're, you need to tell this person they need to stop this shit and they need to stop it now. Then you can authentically express your anger because your anger comes from something that's, that's actually happened and it's actually a problem. It's not your ego that has been slighted. It's your, your being, your boundaries. It's something real that has been slighted. So there's a real response to it. And another, uh, another very common uh, example is that when if your child runs out on the road and doesn't look at what they're doing, then for a lot of parents, <clears throat> that, that is going to cause them to be angry because they're worried about their child being run over by a car. So that anger is actually can be an authentic expression of love and it can be necessary mm. because the child needs to understand that this is dangerous and they may not be at an age where logically explaining it will help. So authentic anger can be a way to express love to the child and teach the child what it must do and not do. Isn't, so, that, isn't that really interesting to kind of just sit here with that, that um, reflection just for a moment actually? not only with a child, but actually in with a partner or with a friend or with somebody is that, that you're very close with, that that anger is actually 
like you said, coming from a place of love, of a place of that you deeply care about that yeah. person so much that it actually has kind of like brought this up within you to kind of act on that. From yeah, that and perhaps people can understand it better in the context of sex because in sex, a lot of people, people, people can have like angry sex and everyone sort of knows what that's like, or most people do. And everyone sort of knows that it's not a bad thing. It's, it's so it's just a type of energy that you can express. So being authentic means you have a moment of consciousness and then you look at what is going on. Is this an authentic energy that I need to express? Or is this a reactive emotion that is egoically based? And this is something you, this is something that you start to realize by starting to looking more into it. It's just like, if you were to become an expert at uh, beer tasting, you would taste a lot of beer and then you would start to get a sense of what's good beer and what's bad beer. Hmm. So I can't tell you exactly what the difference is. You just start observing yourself. You start to feel the quality. What is authentic anger? What is authentic fear? What is authentic sadness? What is egoic fear, egoic sadness, egoic anger? For example, egoic sadness, there are people when they cry, they don't release any pain. They don't feel any better. And they can cry for hours or days or months or years about the same thing and there's no resolution. Hmm. There's not authentic there's not authentic crying, because authentic crying is catharsis catharsis. It unburdens you of something hmm. and then you feel better. But yeah. egoic crying is just a kind of it's self-absorbed misery and it doesn't lead anywhere and it doesn't make anyone feel better. So yeah, it's not moving the person in the, in any direction. It's just kind of like staying stag stagnant with, with that feeling or kind of drowning in that. When, yeah, when you said that, of... when you said that, that crying was cathartic, I actually really kind of just was brought back to a lot of my therapy sessions. Um, when somebody does come from an, that place of authenticity with their, when they cry, it's it's like something is being moved or shifted in them, or some kind of emotional exactly. release is happening. That they, right. and and it can be a lot to sit with, and it also just to allow that person to cry, not right. not being like there to kind of fix that. Not, or, not fixing anything. Yeah, yeah. You're not fixing anything. You're just kind of like sitting, like <laughs> allowing that person to be to be themselves and to be authentic with that crying. Just kind of like express that and that and that doesn't happen that often in our in our daily life just maybe for some people but oftentimes when somebody is crying or somebody's emotional or somebody's whatever they are that people try and like kind of uh comfort them or fix that or kind of um do something to kind of lessen that or something and yeah. and when it comes from a place of authenticity then it's very, very important to allow that person just to express themselves, express whatever that feeling is and to, to kind of give space for that. Extremely, it's a process of healing. And in many cases, it's a process of releasing trauma. Mm. So because we are yeah. so, we have such difficulty allowing other people's emotions that we interrupt that process and we teach children. And this is, uh, you know, a lot of parents are going to hate me for this. But one of the worst things we can do is when our child is upset, we try to distract it. Just imagine what that does to a person's emotional coping mechanisms later in life. You've taught this person that when their emotions are overwhelming, they should try to distract themselves. So what are you suggesting? Toby? Well, you have to, you have to be there with the child that's going through the emotion and you can comfort it and you can, or if it's angry, you can, be there and hold space with it. You can do whatever, but you need to allow the child to go through the emotion. There's a lot of different reasons as to why they need to. Hmm. But if you observe a child or a baby, when they're angry, they are all anger, like seething, furious. They're completely authentic. Yeah. And then what happens, what you'll see a baby do is when the baby is done being angry, the anger is gone. There hmm. is no, it doesn't hold it against anything. Anyone doesn't remember hmm. anything. There's no grudge, nothing, because it has been total in the anger. It is now totally clear again, like yeah. lightning, thunder, rain, every, you know, the weather has been raging, and now it's a clear sky. 
And isn't that and so? A- ba- babies are teaching us that emotions must be allowed completely because that is how we get rid of them, so to speak. Yeah. And that, and that's and and they can teach us so much, like babies or young young children, because they are they are coming from this place of authenticity. They don't have like so much uh, thoughts about what other people think of them yet, or what like kind of worries and kind of fear and all this stuff that kind of gets in the way of being authentic. They they just show up if they need to feel an emotion, they fully express that, get it out of their system. Just kind of here it is, and uh, they don't they don't really care most of the time. Whoever's in that room or whoever's in that environment. If they need to do that, they they do that. And yeah. as we get older, what I notice with myself and with other people as well is that like it gets more and more rules about when we can be emotional, when we can release, yeah. when we can kind of what is the right setting or or what somebody else will think about me um, being angry or me crying or I can't be like that because that means I'm whatever that means for that that person and when that happens it, like our authentic self um gets less and less and less and there's less and less space or environment to be or express that part of ourself and it's just like come on this, this is this is who you are this is your this is your your pure self this is who you are and yeah. and um yeah, so we can learn a lot from kids, and it's it's a it's a beautiful thing to just kind of observe how babies or how kids behave in that way, um, and allow that emotions to be expressed. And notice also, like you were saying, when they have got that out there, it can be a split second, and then they're com- in a completely different emotion or completely different um, state of whatever that is, and that's like well, like. As adults, we can hold on to things for so long, for years, for yeah, for months, for however long we can we can have a grudge with something about that person because of the anger or the sadness that that person that we think that other person caused us. And at the same time, it's like, are we? Can we allow ourselves to be to just kind of uh, open up to that emotion and be willing to have it for for a few moments to actually? be released of that release of that holding on that kind of grudge that 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 pain that that can kind of um cause for our our lives yeah now i got very carried away but that was... no no it's great no it's uh you're completely right and the thing we have to understand is when you shut down the negative side of your system you shut down the positive side as well what people don't understand is that mm. You don't like your anger. You don't like your sadness, your jealousy. You don't like your negative emotions. Okay, but your emotional system has one button. If you click it off, then everything goes dark. And that's why a lot of people get depressed. What really happens is they've closed down so much of their negative emotions that now their positive emotions are gone as well. Because something like anger, if you can't be angry, you can't love. And so many of these, many emotions are on a spectrum. They are one part of a half so if you close down one part then the other part closes down as well so when you express your anger fully you are learning to love fully when you express your sadness fully you're allowing yourself to be joyful fully to laugh fully to to have this depth of 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 joy and life and appreciation so every negative emotion quote unquote is part of the positive aspects as well you can't just cut yourself in half and choose one side. Because even if you could, you'd find that all your positive emotions were lacking something. Something was missing. There was a depth that wasn't there. You have to really have been sad and really cry to really be happy and really appreciate life. Hmm. Because it gives you a spectrum of understanding and you understand the opposites. So it's a huge thing that we're... I always say that I wish people would learn how to be negative and not how to be positive. Because everyone knows how to be happy. That's not a problem. But allowing yourself to be angry, allowing yourself to be afraid, allowing yourself to cry, to be scared, to feel shame. Those are the things people are bad at. And they, they destroy the positive emotions as well. But if you tell people, 
if you try to teach people to be happy, to be all these things, all the positive things, what you ha- end up doing is you end up teaching them how to pretend to be, you know, fake positivity, fake kindness, fake compassion, fake all these things, because then society uh, will praise you because you're such a good person. But the thing is, these emotions should naturally be in you. And they will be if you accept your whole system and if you work on your your negative emotions. That's what they call shadow work, right? If you work on the negative stuff, the positive stuff comes by itself. Hmm. And a lot of people will say, well, being a good person is is uh, it's it's work, it's effort, whatever. Uh, love is a choice and all stuff. But I'll tell you, when you feel compassion that comes by itself, not something you have to do, that quality is unique. That that is a, a divine emotion it's a divine sensation but love comes by itself it, it visits you it's a it's a, a graceful thing that enters you when the positive things comes by themselves it's like a, a gift from from the universe it's not the same as the things that you make up yourself hmm. so you can't you can't just you can't push this bus on your own it has to come it has to come naturally and that requires you to make peace with all the negative things because they are the ones that are sabotaging your joy. It's not because you need to sit down and do a, a gratitude journal or some other crap like that. You don't need to. You just need to find out why is this happiness pipe? Why is it blocked? Well, it's blocked because you don't want to be f- afraid. You don't want to be angry. You don't want to be ashamed. You don't want to admit that you're jealous. You don't want to deal with the negative aspects. You don't want to accept them. <laughs> How do you help people to then with that, with uh, the negative emotions or, or giving space for that or accepting that? I tell them this stuff, but most of all, what I do is when they start expressing it, I show appreciation for it. When they get angry, mm. I show them that I appreciate mm. it. You acknowledge it. I acknowledge it because then yeah. they see that, oh, authentic anger is actually a type of energy. It's not different from love. It may have a different vibration. Mm but it's all energy. And, you know, there was once it was a, I was dating a girl once and she said something like, you know, all oh, the worst thing in the world is if someone gets angry, if they, you know, get in a fight or whatever. And I was like, sometimes when couples are fighting, their anger is really saying that they love each other. Now I'm not saying you should misunderstand this. I'm not talking about toxic fighting hmm. but when, when you don't, if you don't think anger is a bad thing, then when someone is angry at you because they love you, then that anger feels like love to you. It doesn't feel like anger. But if you think all anger is bad, then you might protect yourself at what mm. is actually someone who cares. And that's and that's the part that like coming back from the something you said earlier, I can't actually record <laughs> straight away, but um that there's different parts of yeah, that's right. You said there's different different types of anger or different types of emotions. There's the one coming from your ego and the one coming from your conscious self. And that's and that's to the I think some of the work that, that we do with ourselves and with, with with clients as well is how to discriminate that, how to know the the difference in that emotion. Because oh, yeah. if you're only coming from an like a if you're only coming from the ego anger, and that's that, that that's where a lot of toxic, uh, uh, yeah, challenges can come in relationships and things like that. So it's so so some of the important work with this is to, to to be able to know the difference, and and that difference can be subtle at times. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, being able to distinguish is extremely important because you can always you can always rationalize. You can say, "Oh, my anger is actually authentic anger, or whatever." Hmm. But if your anger is is egoic, it's going to be destructive. Then it's not it's not real because it didn't hmm. come out of you; it came out of your ideas. Hmm. And that's and that's a feeling, isn't it? In the moment when the anger rises up within you, hmm. that it comes from a different place in your body than you kind of. You might, I guess yeah. you could say. You could you could yeah. talk a little bit about that because like I, I'm not good at explaining it at all. I like I just said earlier, 
I just say that people get the quality, they understand the quali- qualitative difference with difference with time, right? By investigating. But perhaps you could talk a little bit about like how do you help people distinguish? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, it's it's tricky, and it will be for anyone who's starting out. It it is tricky, and I think I think like the the starting point actually is what you were saying earlier. This with like that when somebody um, shows or expresses an emotion or a, or even a thought pattern or something, then you actually give appreciation for that, and and that's some of the I guess like the foundational work you could say um is it is actually acknowledging an emotion so like i would I'd say that's the very starting point for so say it's anger right and so you you see anger as a negative emotion it's yeah. something that you can't have in your life yeah. and and therefore whenever anger arises you don't want that so then you resist it and you avoid it or you kind of um so so maybe so say in a relationship, like that's a pretty common thing when anger comes up because a lot of oh, emotions yeah. come up in relationships. So um, so say you you disagree with something and you feel quite alive about that and and you you can feel this anger arising and you're like, okay, hang on a second. I, like before I say something I'm going to regret, I better just stop what I say right now and then right. leave the room or something or... I don't know, do some kind of exercise or something or whatever. But like right. either that or actually just like kind of react from the anger and then say something and then later on there's then you know there's a lot of energy going into yeah, that kind of stuff as well. Um so what I would say is actually when you do notice that anger, like start to notice where it comes from, where it is in your body, what it feels like. And just acknowledge it. Even the simplest thing, like sometimes, um, what I say to to clients is just to say, like, here's here's anger, or here's kind of um, frustration, or here's irritation, or here's kind of whatever that emotion is for you. And that's a way of like kind of just noticing it, acknowledging it. Yeah. Um, and I would say that for me, that's like the the the, the groundwork in kind of starting to kind of be okay with having that and actually starting to welcoming that in or appreciating that anger. So like, instead of like saying, Hey, no anger, I don't want you in my life. Yeah. And and I'm going to avoid you to saying, oh, here's the anger again. I, I see you. I acknowledge, I appreciate you come, come into that, that moment or that into my body. And where does that feel? Where, where is that? And kind of be curious about that. Um, yeah, that's really true. Maybe we should have, because I, I I have the flaw of assuming that people know what I know, which is an incredibly. I bad. um I do that all the time. <laughs> you're, you're good at you're good at at bringing up like what what does a beginner uh, need to know? Because here's the thing: anger happens in your body, and anger is a, a bunch of different processes. Some are chemical, some are, um, some are mental some more thoughts whatever and when you as you say when you start to look in your body and in your mind like what is anger how does it arise how does it feel where is it in the stomach is it in the chest mm. like anger is a very minute process which has different uh, which has different aspects and it's it may sound complicated but once you start looking inside it's not that complicated you'll see it very obviously um and it has some mental component as well if it's egoic anger then it's it's coming from a thought um, so that it'll have a very strong mental component. If it's not egoic anger, it's probably coming from an emotion and it will feel more pure in a sense. Uh, but one thing that's interesting is that authentic anger, it strikes me, is actually a vulnerable kind of thing. Like you can be sad and you can be vulnerable and angry. You can yell at someone like, you know, I just want you to fucking love me. Like, why don't you love me? That's a kind of, that's a way of being vulnerable and angry at the same time. You're expressing, and that kind of that and that kind of. If you if you are in a partnership with someone who does not have an aversion to anger, that can be a way of communicating your needs, 
because if you are vulnerable enough to be angry in a way where you're not, where you're actually saying what's inside you, then that can be a way to communicate with the other person. And, and relationships are different. People have different temperaments, different preferences. Some some couples want to sit down and talk things out quiet, quietly, respectfully, and that's fine if that's what you want. That comes down to preference. I prefer someone who will speak emotionally, passionately, because I, I like that. That's my preference. Um, but no matter what kind of person you are, you must have the capacity to to become to to speak with passion, because <clears throat> even if you are by nature a more reserved, quiet person, you must be able to express your emotions um, because if you're not able to express your emotions then you're repressing something and that's going to create a, a block in you even if most of the time you're a quiet person who prefers to talk in a reserved way in a respectful way in a calm way about things then there will still be times where you need to be able to allow yourself to be truly angry so everyone needs this ability because it's the opposite of repressing we back in we back Are we back? All right. So I just finished saying that even if you're a reserved person, then you still need to be able to get angry now and then. Even if you prefer to discuss things calmly or whatever, you'll still need the ability to accept your emotions um, even when they are strong. Right. Right. I think that when a, a lot of the emotions people find difficult when they start to be authentic is the ones that have built up over time. So people are like, well, I'm so angry. I'm too angry. Yeah, you are because you've waited so long to get in contact with it. So there are special things you have to do in that case. You, then you have, you know, I've yelled into my pillow a lot because the anger was from the past. It wasn't, it had nothing to do with the person. It had nothing to do with the situation. And so I didn't, that, that anger was not supposed to go there. So you can yell at a pillow, you can hit something. The, the anger is expressed in humans through our natural weapons. So if you bite something, you release anger. And if you claw something, you release anger. These are the, these are the direct portals of releasing anger. Like if you rip at something or you bite it, that's the most direct way. And don't feel embarrassed about these things. You're, part of you is still an animal. Do what you need to do to get these things out. But other than that, there is, you, can, you can get a... You can work. Yeah. Yeah. No, and it's it's you 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 just you have to do what you have to do, and if you have to punch a a, a boxing bag, whatever. But you must understand that if you have too much anger in you, that's like poison. You you whatever you have too much of, it needs to be released. Um.
Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, if you have too much of an emotion, it's in your body chemistry and it's, it's stressing you out. It becomes toxic to you. And, and, and that's why when people start to become more conscious and start going into their body for the first time, some of these emotions come up that can be difficult because those are the authentic emotions that they've repressed. So if you start to become more conscious and you find anger, sadness or whatever, don't despair. Your body is just saying, hey, we have too much of this. It's toxic to us. We need to let go of it. And and if you don't let go of it, you'll your energy will be you'll have, be draining your energy. You'll get illnesses. You'll find that life just generally is in some way something's just missing. You're not feeling you you don't feel that life is full and complete. So you have to you have to allow this thing to come come out. So if you become more conscious and these things come up, never never think that's a bad thing. It's being shown to you because you're you're starting to dig and it's coming up and it's it's supposed to come out. It's not because your your internal being is full of anger or whatever. It's because you're trying to get in contact with yourself and there's this this deposit of of emotion which you need to release so that you can get deeper into yourself and into your own authentic nature. <clears throat> Right. Yeah. And, and anger, <clears throat> whatever culture you're living in, certain emotions are looked down on. For example, in Latin America, it's fine to be jealous and it's fine to be passionate and angry. Uh, but in Denmark, you know, being passionate, being angry, being jealous is not fine, but then other things are considered fine. So whatever, whatever. Huh? <clears throat> well it's considered fine to be like more quiet or introverted or you know things that in other cultures are are not considered acceptable so if you so the negative emotions you have which your culture denounces those are the most difficult ones and um and the more civilized the, the the country is, the more into the West we go, the more anger is uh, seen as a negative emotion because anger means lack of control and civilization means control. So the more civilized you go, the more the fear of losing control is. So anger can be extremely difficult because there's the fear of control. And if you haven't been in your anger for 10 years, then you're going to be extremely afraid to lose control when you get angry. But this is something I urge you to go into it anyway. When you're when you're facing your anger with your eyes open, you will not lose control. And if you're about to lose control, you will know. So you'll just have to wait. And you can do it later. But to be conscious, to increase your consciousness so that you can be with your anger without losing control is incredibly important. And that's it's work you have to do. Um, because you cannot just avoid anger. 
And and the fascinating thing about anger is that if you allow your anger completely, you th- you may think that you'll completely lose control, but you will have complete control over your anger. Because if you allow your anger, then your consciousness just puts itself around your anger like a like a uh, a vessel. It just it puts itself just right on top of your anger. And so it's always in control of your anger and you can decide how much you'll let out or let in. But if you flinch or if you're afraid, then you lose control. So, the, uh, yeah, because, and then you lose consciousness and then you lose control. So the more you can allow it, anything you allow, you look at with eyes open. And everything you look at with eyes open, how could it take control of you? How could it take you over? If your eyes are open, the emotion will never, ever overpower you. It's when you close your eyes and try to look away or flee or repress it for years that it comes up with such a force that it overwhelms you and and takes control of you. And anger is such an important emotion and such a, again, you know, sexuality, anger is incredibly important for putting energy into uh, certain, certain kind of, Certain kinds of moods and sex requires anger. Anger, there is in love. When you love someone, there's anger in that. Like when you just want to squeeze someone to death because you love them so much, an aspect of that is anger. And the same with children. You want, you know, you you love them so much, you just want to bite them or something. You know, the the cute aggression and stuff. So anger is part of love, as strange as it sounds. Yeah, you, you can't help it. You want, you know, you... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love you so much. I just want to kill you. Um, but uh, but yeah. So so every emotion that you have, that you, if you can absorb every emotion into your life, then your life will become extremely full, and it will become extremely rich, and you'll have extreme death. So whatever you're avoiding, absorb it, live it, go through it, and you'll find a, a much deeper richness in in, in all your life. Well, I mean, you know, in, in Denmark, you know, we have, we repress a lot of our emotions and then we drink a lot of alcohol. And in Denmark, you drink more alcohol than, you know, many places and especially young people, right? So is that a coincidence? No, it's, it's complete correlation. The alcohol is there to give us a, an emotional out where we can express our emotions. So my... Yeah, it's a bad it's a bad coping mechanism, but 
Um, <clears throat> so my advice would be like, uh, you have to find people that are willing to allow you to have and express emotions and the other people in your life, you have to teach them. Um, I remember my, my ex-girlfriend, uh, we'd known each other for three weeks or something. And for some reason, some situation created the fact that I, I came to think of my, I think it was my I think it was Father's Day or something, and I was thinking about my my dead father that day, and I just you know I could just feel it coming up. I was with her, and I could feel that this thing was coming, and then uh, I was just crying, and it was just like a I was crying like I was sobbing, like it was one of those really deep, deep cries because that's it's releasing trauma. It was releasing, um, it was releasing sorrow, basically a deep sorrow, and. She didn't know what to do in that situation. So I, I just told her, you know, I just need you to, to be here with me and just, you know, comfort me, hold me. So you have to be a professional uh, crier, so to speak. You have to be able to tell people what you need them to do or not do in the situation. You have to both master your own emotions, but you have to teach other people as well because they, and it may sound like it's a lot to ask, but people don't know this and they don't grow up with it. So choose people who can let you have your emotions and don't try to distract you or try to talk it down or up or whatever. And for the people you already have, just teach them, just te explain to them how and teach them how. And if they just refuse, if they don't want to learn, then, you know, spend less time with them because they're actively preventing you from accepting your whole being. And that's not a good thing. It's not the kind of people you want. You don't want their influence in your life because if you can't be you, then you're, you're being, you know, something else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an example of being authentic, right? Because your your emotions are I, you know, I, I, I just want you to hold me right now. Your thoughts are, I wish you would hold me. And your actions are, please just hold me. That's an example of uh, an authentic action, right? Because it's in alignment with your emotions and your thoughts and your actions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, you were matching her energy. Yeah. 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 You there? You said on the other side of that and then continue. Yeah. And to share, to share the positive things is the nectar of life. It's what it's all about. Like in Denmark, we don't do it much. We we go to we go to uh, southern countries because we love people who are warm and passionate and expressive. We aren't like that. But it's so like like if I if I want to say something nice to a stranger, I do it. I I, I do that because like a moment where you have some energy to express to another person, which is positive. That's what life is all about. Do it like do it. And, <clears throat> and when you are authentic, one thing is also you'll, you'll scare people away who are not meant for you by being authentic. So if, if you're, if you're staying true to yourself, then if people really actually don't really like the way you are, then they'll eventually they'll fuck off because they can't stand it when you keep doing it. But if you tune yourself down to to fit in with someone, then you may have people sticking around in your life that don't actually like you the way you are. So it's not really good for anyone. So there's also, and people who like the way you are come closer to you. So when you're authentic and you express yourself, you're not afraid, then the people who are not for you go further away and the people who are for you go closer. And that's such a logical thing when you think about it. If you show yourself, then the right people come closer to you and the wrong people get turned off, right? So it's, yeah. Yeah, because, because otherwise you're changing your energy to match a person that is not actually authentically <clears throat> on the same, you know, level as you for whatever reason.
I remember uh, some girlfriends I had. I don't remember entirely what the situation was, but I remember she was like, oh, you know, I don't like when you compliment me that much. Or she expressed that when I said too many nice things, she felt it was, uh, it, it got annoying to her or whatever. And there are two reasons for this. The first reason is that she, she thinks it may be like kind of a manipulative thing. Like it's a way to, you know, get something. So you're being really nice because you th you're compensating for something or you want something, whatever. So some people, unconscious people, can use excessive compliments in a bad way. That's the one uh, uh, possibility. The other possibility is that when someone compliments you, you are confronted with your insecurities, which say the opposite thing of what the compliment is. Then you have to choose to let go of your trauma and actually feel like a person who is worthy of those things or... Or you have exactly you have to take it, in or you have to ward it off. So, but either way, uh, for me these days, if someone doesn't like when I compliment them, compliment them, that's a huge red flag. Like I would never stick around such a person because, I mean, I talk to them of course about it, but if they just maintain that my naturally, me naturally expressing something positive in their direction, if that was bad for them, that's a pretty clear sign that we should not be doing anything together. Because what is what comes out of me in a positive way is received for them in a negative way. Now you can't be much more incompatible than that. <laughs> Imagine that you can't take what is good as a good thing. Like life isn't full of good things, right? So when something is good, you can't take that. You know that's that's not a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. But if you are one of our listeners and that's how you feel, then you just start by being authentic from there. Then you just express vulnerably, you know, I don't feel worthy of what you're telling me. I don't feel worthy of your compliments. <clears throat> so don't be defensive about it. Just vulnerably open yourself up and say, this is how I feel. And then that will allow you because you're authentic, that'll allow you to let go of it. And then you open up to, to that love, which is coming. So it's not that it's a bad thing to be this, this way. The bad thing is when you defend your uh, destructive mechanisms, that's a problem. The people who hold on to the things that hurt themselves and others, these people are problems. And, for an authentic conscious person, the best thing is to just avoid them after a while because you're like oil and water because an authentic conscious person wants to fix the things that are not um, in alignment, not working the way they should. And an unconscious person, an inauthentic person wants things to stay the way they are, doesn't want to touch any of those painful um things that are inside them doesn't want to resolve anything you just want to minimize discomfort as much as possible and when you do that your life becomes very small with time and i would like to i would like to to sort of uh end this episode with another pointer because i said living with your thoughts emotions and actions in alignment and i said living from the inside out but another pointer I like to use is if a person is authentic, you can see how they feel on their face. I think that's a very direct way of saying it. And it also gives you a pointer if you are authentic, because that's, that's often what we don't want, right? If someone says something mean to us, we don't want them to see that they hurt us. But why not? What's wrong with being hurt? And by the way, if the person is a, a mean, a bully or whatever, they should see what their actions are doing to another person. Because sometimes that's what makes, not always, but sometimes that, that's what makes a bully understand that well, I'm hurting a real person. Because if everyone is just pretending to not care or whatever, but you just say, you know, what you said made me really unhappy and I don't understand why you would say something like that. That's very different from attacking or defending or pretending. Just say, you know, to strongly stand in the fact that you feel the way you feel and express yourself clearly, that is gives you a lot of strength. And by the way, if you keep doing this, people can't keep bullying you because um, you become stronger and stronger every time 
you choose to be vulnerably in your feelings. And at some point you become invulnerable. The more vulnerable you become, the more invulnerable you become. Because when you no longer have a problem showing that you are not strong, not perfect, then what are they going to do? Someone might say, ha, you're crying. And you can say, yes, I'm crying. And I'm actually proud that I can cry because crying is a natural human thing. And you can't cry. So who is the weak one here? So you can become very strong by allowing yourself to be weak. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because if if you're not coming from that place then there's then one of the three things, actions, emotions, thoughts are in conflict. So part of you is actually fighting yourself. So your, your energy is not directly from the inside out and you're, you're wasting a lot of energy because you're actually in a conflict with yourself. You're fighting, you're suppressing, you're saying, no, not this, not this. You're pretending, you know, pretend to be positive, suppress the negative. You know, it's, it's incredibly draining. To be authentic, it is also the least energy consuming thing, the most natural. Indeed. Yeah. It is, it's energy. In, and it can it can be expressed in many different forms, but it's all energy. It's all love in a way. It's different shades of love, and that that's what makes it not boring. No one wants to be lovey dovey sweet all the time, right? So there's a spectrum of colors, and that's what makes keeps life interesting. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, it was a very enjoyable episode. I'm glad we went with this subject. There was energy in it for me at least, and it looks like for you also. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, we're a little bit over time. So I think that's it for now. We'll uh, see you on the trail.